Hi again, Attorney Steve Vondran, and welcome back to the Vondran Legal Hour. We are talking in this podcast about the copyright bullies. We are talking about BitTorrent. We are talking about downloading porn and getting busted. So I don't mean to say that jokingly because it's not a fun matter when you get one of these what we call love letters. And, you know, basically, so what happens nowadays, you, you all remember Napster. Napster used to be around and, you know, allowed everyone to share share all their files. And it was all shared through a central company called Napster. And so basically, you could share files, you log into the system, you get your little client network, as we call it, you download it, you have the client on your computer. So in other words, you have the software on your computer and you're able to then share files with other people. Everything that you have that you make available would be shareable with somebody else. They can download it right off your your computer. And and you could you could share anything that you found on somebody else's computer. So so at the end of the day, when you add up thousands and thousands and millions of users, you have like everything, you know, software, games, books. Uh, ebooks, audiobooks, you know, all kinds of things. And, you know, of course, it looked like, wow, everything is free. Can you believe this? Everything is free that I see here. And yeah, technically it was, and you could technically download these things and use it. Um, maybe you could get a software program and it comes with a crack code. So everything is all set up, everything that you need. Uh, let's say you got a nice Autodesk AutoCAD. It normally costs about $4,000 and wow, it's free. Oh my gosh, the internet, things have been changed. (laughs) So, but that's kind of the old school. Now we all know that Napster eventually went out of business, uh, contributory copyright uh, threats and claims and all the legal battles and everything else. They eventually said, you can't do that. You can't make all this stuff available, all this copyrighted material. Remember, anything that's an original work of authorship, fixed in a tangible medium of expression, is protected by copyright law. And the copyright holders, when they have something serious, something good, piece of software, book, movies, you know, they will go, they will go get a federal copyright registration so that, you know, they can go police and protect their, their copyrights. So, you know... You had all this copyrighted material traveling through these Napster networks, everybody sharing. It's a good old time. Everyone's having fun. There's too many people to go after, right? One of those things like when when the crowd riots, you know, the cops can't get everybody. They can only get a few of the really bad ones or whatever. So, you know, that was kind of the situation that went on for a while. And now the recent thing is the BitTorrent, which BitTorrent is essentially, I want to say essentially the same thing. And but yet there is no central company. There's no company like Napster to go after. You know, back in the Napster days, they said, well, let's hold Napster liable. They have lots of money. They're this big, big new tech company. Let's go after them. And, you know, that was part of the problem. So but now it's peer to peer. So it's it's kids. It's kids in their living rooms. It's your neighbors next door. And so everybody's sharing. And a lot of these a lot of these persons may be what we consider to be more judgment proof don't have a lot of money, they don't have big million dollar insurance policies to go after, so forth and so on. There's no officer and director liability, you know, different people that you can go after. So now you have this problem where you have all these people sharing files and sharing the same things, the games, the books, the audios, the songs, the pictures, comics, Uh, you know, uh, Xbox games, uh, software, Microsoft, Windows software, you know, operating system software. So, you know, there it's and it's limited, the things that are out there. So now, though, we still see and we know that there are what we call copyright bullies. There are in these networks where the peers are sharing their stuff, right? They're all sharing the files and everything. In that process, you have sort of what we call trackers, trackers looking in. Um, let's say, for example, you may have a software company looking in to see what's being downloaded. Let's put it this way. They set up their own BitTorrent account. They download the client and they just look around. They go, we're not going to do anything. We're not, we're not here to get a game or a book or 
anything. We're here to basically monitor and see what's going on. And oh, we see a bunch of people downloading our, let's say, Autodesk software, you know, the AutoCAD for architects and engineers. Whoa, everybody's, that's $4,000 a download. Um, and so they get the IP address, which ha- which basically tells them where you're coming from, so forth and so on. And if they work through your internet service provider, if they're able to get that information or but through some other means, um, they may be able to track you down and then send you a demand letter or your ISP may send you a demand letter. And so lots, lots of times now in, you know, these are the things, but you know, one of the areas that can pop up is in the area of porn, uh, downloadable porn. So you're downloading a movie. One of the big companies that goes out and sues people's Malibu media is one of them. And so, you know, you have to look out if you're downloading somebody's copyrightable works, you're not paying for it. And then you're making it accessible on your peer to peer um, torrents, people can, you know, torrent through you. And so you're essentially opening it up for sharing with them. And the file is being shared from your computer to their computer. You know, this can be argued to be a violation of the copyright holders bundle of rights, the bundle of rights that you get when you ha- when you own a copyright. So the right to reproduce and copy publicly display, display, distribute those kinds of things. So this is where the user can find themselves himself or herself in a copy copyright dispute, maybe getting a demand letter, what we call the love letter. Hey, you know, you're downloading my stuff, you're not paying, and it's 150000 per infringed work for willful infringement. Now you're busted. And so that's when our office gets the calls. So these are, these are something to be aware of. And if you get one of these letters, do yourself a favor, contact a copyright lawyer before you go sending nasty email back or calling them and harassing them or even shredding their their letter and saying, I'm not going to deal with this. They'll go away. You know, maybe they do, maybe they don't. If they don't, you have big problems. So, you know, the best bet is to contact a copyright counsel. Let's review your case. Let's see what it is before you respond. There may be various defenses. You may have, you may have paid for the software that you're using. You may have paid for the movie. You know, let's take a look. You may have, there may be consent issues. You know, one of the things is these software companies, you know, they can, you know, not just software, I'm saying movie companies, you know, Paramount, Warner Brothers, whatever, you know, they have all these companies, they know their stuff's out there, and they can go out and in Malibu Media, they can go out and try to get these uh, movies out of there, right? They should be trying to to get them out of there so people can't share, but that's a daunting task. So, you know, one argument may be they're not sending DMCA takedown notices so that this they're infringing works of getting out of the marketplace. Uh, instead, they're sending demand letters and just trying to get money. So, again, if you get a letter and it's due to BitTorrent or file sharing, um, you know, give us a call. We're happy to take a look at that, see what kind of defenses, maybe fair use. There may be some type of fair use defense. So, contact us. You can find out more about what we do at askattorneysteve.com. That's our main website. And you can click in the search bar and just search for copyright bully and you'll find a little more information. So that's askattorneysteve.com, askattorneysteve.com, and type in copyright bully. We offer low flat rate fees in many cases, so you don't have to worry about some crazy, shocking, nauseating, gigantic legal bill that's going to you know put you in the hole the rest of your life. So we try to make this affordable so that we can get your problem solved, get some confidentiality, you know, get the deal worked down, or get it, take, get it to a take nothing, as we call it. So give us a call askattorneysteve.com. Thank you for listening. Feel free to share this podcast on your social media networks and get the news out there. Okay. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Attorney Steve out.